Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk about cellular respiration. Um, we're going to briefly uh, detail the main parts or the main aspects of each step in cellular respiration. Okay, so cellular respiration is done by all organisms, okay, including some bacteria, including some archaea, um, protists, um, animals, so done by all organisms, okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, let me change the font here real quick and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have four main steps that we're going to talk about. Um, the first one is glycolysis. So we got glycolysis. Then we're going to talk about um, pyruvate oxidation. So these are big, big words, maybe big terms, but they're really not that complicated. Okay, so we're going to get the basics for when you do get classes that are more in depth. Um, you at least have an idea of what's going on. Then we have the citric acid cycle, um, Krebs cycle, and then we have oxidative phosphorylation again these may sound like big big words but they're really not that big okay so uh, let's make some room in here to talk about a couple of terms okay so in glycolysis we start with glucose okay some food molecule um, we're gonna break it down into two pyruvates okay so let's see, let's get to, I got a lot of images and we're going to go over a couple of these images and so I can, uh, so I can really talk about these. Um, let's see, where can we start? Um, okay, so here's an image of glycolysis. Again, it looks like a lot, a lot that's going on. So here's your glucose molecule, um, this ATP. Um, during glycolysis, we use uh, two ATP, so let's see. Um, Use two ATP. Okay, um, this has to be over here. Produce two pyruvates. Um, so we're going to use energy to break a little bit of these uh, molecules down. So we're going to use a little bit of energy, but we're mainly going to produce more energy than we actually use. Okay, so we see in this image right here, uh, the green one, the yellow ones, the one we use ATP. ATP is being used. Um, and now we have your ATP that's being released, um, NAD and NADA. So these are uh, electron carriers, which I'll talk about right now. Um, I got ahead of myself. So and here's another two ATP on the bottom that we produced. Okay. So in total, we produced uh, two pyruvate. So two pyruvate, a pyruvate is just half of that glucose. Instead of being six carbon, it's three carbon. Okay. So pyruvate is half of the glucose. Half of the glucose. I'll just put it in there so you remember that. Uh, we also produce four ATP. Um, and then uh, we have two N NADH. So NADH or NAD. So we have a couple of uh, called electron carriers. Okay, let's see if I can write it um, on the side. So, here. Here. so these little guys or these NAD. Mainly NAD plus. Uh, NAD plus is the electron carrier. So when it grabs a proton or an H plus, um, it's gonna it's gonna carry it somewhere else. Okay, so it's gonna take it somewhere else, and we're gonna talk into the last step of why that's important. But um, so that one's the one that's gonna it's gonna take it in there and, and carry it. Um, so that's our NADH. Okay, another one uh, it can be FADH two. Okay, so we're only gonna I'm focus on that one first. Um, okay, so glycolysis, we have our glucose, our food molecule, use two energies, break it down, and make two pyruvates, or split it in half, uh, make four ATPs, and get uh, and use, you make two NADHs. Okay, so since we made four ATPs minus the two ATPs we use. We have uh, two ATP net. That's how much we made. Okay, we used two. We made four, so we make two. Okay. Um, in general, 
And during cellular respiration, we make 36 ATPs. Okay, so we're going to start and go one by one. So we have two right here. Okay, and then we'll jump into the next ones um, later on. Okay, so let's see if there's any other images of, of glycolysis. Here's, a, here's the example. Um, so let's see energy investment, how much energy. So we use two of those energies. Um, and then energy payoff, we make four of those energies and the two NADHs. Okay, and the two pyruvates. So those are our results. Um, and the bottom, our net, two pyruvates, two waters, two ATPs, two NADHs, and two H pluses. Okay, so that's glycolysis. As simple as that. We're not going to get into detail into every single little thing. Um, all those other fancy big names, phosphoglycerate, biphosphoglycerate, don't worry about all, any of that. Um, just in general, what comes in and what goes out. Okay. Now we got the next one, which is called pyruvate oxidation, which is down here. Um, pyruvate oxidation. Awesome. Okay. So this one, what do we have? The name itself tells you the pyruvate. Okay, so we start with the pyruvate. Um, this occurs in the cytoplasm. Okay, so glycolysis, I forgot to put up here, occurs in the cytoplasm. And I'm gonna make some images here, see if, uh, if they maybe help you a little bit more with that. Um, so glycolysis in the cytoplasm. So this is the cytoplasm, that little area here. Now, the pyruvate can't really enter the mitochondria. Remember how we have our proteins, our barriers, and don't, don't let everything to, through. So we have to um, break it down even more into acetyl-CoA, which is another fancy name, which is over here on the left, acetyl-CoA. And then that can go in there, and then we can continue doing what we need to do. So um, we start with pyruvate, and then produce our Acetyl CoA. Okay. Um, so we start with two pyruvates. So numbers are important. And produces two acetyl CoA's. Um, we don't make energy in step. We're really just breaking it down for it to get through to the other place. And we also have some electron carriers. Two NADH. Okay. Um, so remember. Our formula. I don't remember the formula. Let me add it in here. Okay, see if you remember the formula. Uh, we have C6H12O6 plus O2. So food and oxygen. Um, now we'll get some arrows in here. Uh, and then we have produce CO2. Plus our water, plus 36 ATP. Okay, so that's really what we want to get into, those energies that we're making um, and how we're breaking this molecule down here. All those hydrogens, carbons, oxygens. We make CO2, we make some water, but really we're focusing on the energy itself. Okay, so through glycolysis, we got this is our glucose. Okay, in case you... Uh, didn't write it down so it's our glucose here on the left break it down out of those 36 we made two um, we made four technically but we used two so we made two okay we made two of those ATPs um, now we have those pyruvates we got to break that down more so with those pyruvates we make acetyl-CoA and NADH okay and that's pyruvate oxidation so the word itself says it pyruvate oxidation remember oxidation is loss um, let's see if I have other images in here about any of that. Mm. Okay, so we are right here by rubin oxidation, and now it's going, we're in here. Now your acetyl coas are in here in the little end of the arrow going into the mitochondria. This is a mitochondria. Okay, um, so this is mitochondria. You get that? Okay, so here's an image. Again, I'm going to talk a lot, a lot, and then we'll tie it all together. Okay, now, um, this is a big term before I move on. So the ATP, how we make it, um, we phosphorylate an ADP plus P. So remember from the energy video from last week, 
Um, let me just put in parentheses here. Um, so let me see if I can. Okay, so we're going to talk about, um, so we have ADP plus P. Um, adenosine diphosphate. Remember, adenosine di means two phosphates. So ADP, when you add AP, you make ATP. Okay, so two phosphates, you add a phosphate, make an, an ATP or triphosphate. That is phosphorylation, the adding of a phosphate into the ADP to make ATP. Phosphorylation. Okay, so just so I don't keep adding that word and talking about that. Um, and that's phosphorylation. So now, and uh, there's different types of phosphorylations. And the ones we did in glycolysis um, is called substrate level phosphorylation. So I'm going to add it in here as well so I don't forget. Substrate level phosphorylation or SLP in case we use it more. So what does that mean? Look at this image on the left. We have our substrate that brings the P. It adds it to the ADP. And now that substrate or that product leaves and we have some ATP, energy ready to be used. So we needed that P. Um, that's how we make that ATP, okay? So substrate level phosphorylation. Um, that's, for, that's so far right now how we're making ATP. This one on pyruvate oxidation, we didn't make ATP. So we don't need any phosphorylation, okay? I just wanted to add it there before I move on about ATP. Okay, let's go through our images. So we did that. Here's our glycolysis, not in detail, pyruvate. We're good, we just got two molecules. Um, now, let's go through the citric acid cycle. Again, this may look like, what the heck is going on, right? There's a lot going on. There's really not that much. <laughs> let's get through this. So, um, what did we have? Uh, after pyruvate oxidation, we have acetyl-CoA, right? Um, so we have the two acetyl-CoA's. Oh. Number two, acetyl-CoA's. So we got to break it down even more. Get some, um, some of those electron carriers, um, some of those protons, NADH's, FADH's, okay? So... If you can see on this image, there's a little circle we did here, or this image that they have. We have our acetyl CoA here on the. Let's see if I can draw a little bit. I need to draw, but we have a acetyl CoA here, okay, and it goes through the cycle, um, release some CO2. Remember, it's part of our formula, some CO2s. Nice. Um, NAD. Oops, oops. There it is. NAD plus comes in here, gets that H plus, and gets into NADH. Okay, so those are our, our, our carriers, electron carriers. ADP comes here, creates some ATP. Then FAD is also a carrier. Um, you get FADH2. Okay, so let's talk about what we get, what we have. So we have the two acetyl-CoA's. Um, then we produce, uh, we produce um, some CO2s. We produce... Um, Three NADHs per molecule. But remember, we have two acetyl CoA's. So this whole image is one acetyl CoA. Since we have two, we have six NADHs. Okay, six NADHs. Um, then we also produce the FADH2. Here's one, but it's two molecules, so we have two FADH2. And. Um, we have our ATP here, okay? So we have another two ATPs that are being produced, okay, in this little cycle here. Again, we're just looking at the what we have coming in and what we have coming out, okay? Um, there's other classes where you do get in detail about the whole process itself, how it happens, how it's breaking down, but we're not gonna focus on that in this video. It's more of the general idea of, of how citric acid cycle and all that stuff. Um, this is also done through SLP. Also done through SLP, substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so far so good. Let's see if we got any more images. Um, here it is, the whole thing. Um, the acetyl-CoA, 
break it down a little bit into citrate, isocitrate, uh, alpha ketoglutarate. We don't need to focus on any of that. CO2 coming out, NADHs, succinyl-CoA, succinate, ATPs. Okay, just focus on what we have at the end. So it's all in yellow, whatever we'll be producing in this image. The NADH, NADH, ATP, FADH2, and another NADH. So those are the three NADHs, FADH, ATP. Um, since we have two acetylcholines, we double it up. Six, two, and two. Okay, awesome. Now, um, lastly, we have what, what's called oxidative phosphorylation okay um let me see if i can draw something real quick um here on the side of this so if you remember our mitochondria so it looks something like this i'm trying to draw it as pretty as possible and you remember it looks kind of like a kind of like plankton like a tomato or something like that it looks kind of like this okay um so this, this is our outer membrane uh, this one's our inner membrane. And then you have the little space in the middle right here. Okay, so what happens through here? So you have seen this image on the left glycolysis, what's outside, right? Glycolysis is in the cytoplasm of the whole cell. So think of this like the whole cell. That's just the mitochondria right here. Let's put an M in there so you don't forget. I know maybe in class I'll explain a little better with some images on the iPad, but, um, okay, so produce some energy. Now, the acetyl-CoA goes in there. We produce a little bit of more energy, more energy. but now we have, um, let's see that, let's pick another color. Uh, put blue, okay, so. So now, we have this, um, these proteins in here, or an electron transport chain, it's called. That's what I'm talking about, electron carriers. So we have an electron transport chain, and it's really right here on the edges. Remember how we have our membranes, and we have stuff in the membranes? So it's really on the edges, and just moving electrons plus, or H pluses over here, it's pumping these H pluses all around that membrane. So I'm just gonna put pluses for these H pluses. And pluses and pluses all around the membrane. So that's what the electron um, transport chain does. Okay, let's see if we, okay, so we're good there. So oxidative phosphorylation, um, electron transport chain pumps H plus. Okay, into the membrane. So now what's gonna happen? We have another cool molecule in there called ATP synthase or a little protein in the in the membrane and it's like a little it looks like a robot but it's kind of what it is so what does that do why why is so important about the ones that carry the H pluses what's the whole point of that um, so the point of that is that ATP synthase uses the H plus to phosphorylate ATP into ATP. Whoa, let me say it again. So this molecule or this protein that's here um, on the membrane is going to use these H pluses. All of these H pluses that I was telling you about, they're going to go in here, they're going to turn this around like a cycle, and then it's going to phosphorylate the ADP into ATP and make some energy. So the whole purpose of this is to make ATP. So remember in the whole formula we have, we make 36. So far we had two, none, and two. Where do the other 34 come from? Right here. The biggest source of ATP is uh, um, during oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so we have the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis is called. Um, let's put that here. Chemio osmosis okay, and that's the NTP synthase uh, uses the H pluses to phosphorylate ADP into ATP okay, awesome so that's how that works so here it is um, here's our little electron transport chain and some carriers so here's our little chain one two three four um, again 
when you get into another class, you can get more in depth into each one of those. Pumping those H pluses to the top, creating this gradient up here of a lot of little pluses, a lot of little pluses, which are then used by ATP synthase to make ATP. So here's chemiosmosis, here's the electron transport chain. Okay, so this is our chain right here, which is awesome. Okay, this whole thing, oxidative phosphorylation. Again, like you guys said, I'll send you these images so they can help you out. Um, but that's basically what happens during oxidative phosphorylation. So, um, just talking in general, what happens during oxidative phosphorylation? I could have, let's just see. Okay. Um, produce. Thirty-four ATPs, crazy. Thirty-four ATPs. So almost everything in there. Sorry, thirty-two ATPs. Okay, thirty-two. I did my math wrong. Thirty-two plus two plus two. Those are the thirty-six ATPs. Um, the method they don't use substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, we use chemiosmosis. Remember the other ones was SLP. You know, it's chemiosmosis. Instead of SLP. And how many electron carriers? Nope, not anymore. You see how over here, they all came in here. So you can see this image. They all came in here. Here's on the left. NADHs now pumped their Hs and left as NAD. FADHs plump the Hs, pump the Hs and left as FAD. So what's gonna happen? Those are gonna go back. So back to glycolysis or to um, either one of the of our other steps, our pyruvate oxidation or citric acid cycle, and grab some H's and then come back all the way to the mitochondria and pump some more. And then go back, grab some H's, and then come back and pump some more. So that's the whole purpose. So they are pretty important. I didn't put that parentheses there. Okay, so we produce those 32 some pretty cool so here's again uh, a big uh, picture of everything we just went through um, we have the glycolysis here glucose into pyruvates outside remember this is outside um, some NADHs and then break it down into acetyl CoA inside um, some NADH um, citric cycle citric acid cycle inside get some energy coming out to ATPs six NADHs, two FADHs, and through the membrane, the electron transport chain, chemiosmosis, and you make 32 to 34 approximately ATPs to give us a total of those 36 or 38. We'll just say 36, not to make it confusing. Okay, um, okay, now there's another thing that we need to talk about a little bit, okay? So this happens, um, in the presence of oxygen okay this is called aerobic respiration if you've heard of it aerobic respiration so aerobic is when you have oxygen so cellular respiration with oxygen okay when you have without oxygen it's called anaerobic respiration okay so without oxygen so what's the biggest difference if there is oxygen present, once you go through glycolysis, which I'm gonna highlight here on the left, let's see if I can draw. Okay, so we have glycolysis. Um, if you have some oxygen present, then you're just gonna keep going through and go and break down the pyruvate into acetyl CoA and break down down, break that down, um, and then go through the oxidative phosphorylation, the chain, and make energy, a lot of energy. If we can't if we don't have oxygen, there are some organisms that right after the pyruvate, they stop. Right after the pyruvate, um, they'll break it down just a little more, but they will create ethanol, or they, that's alcohol fermentation, like yeast, or they will create lactate, that's lactic acid fermentation, that's in the soreness in our muscles. When we work out, if you work out, I don't work out, but when I used to work out, um, I'd be super sore and that would be that lactic acid being formed there due to the lack of oxygen in my cells to do the cellular respiration, doing all the activities, all the energy that I need. I don't have enough oxygen for them to supply them. 
Uh, therefore, we produce, they don't go through the other steps and they stop there right after the pyruvates and they break down and create some lactic acid. They still make a little bit of energy, but they make more of um, the ethanol and the lactic acid um, than we would like. We want a lot of energy. So that's what happens in fermentation, okay? Um, so in the presence of oxygen, um, so let's say here we have um, respiration goes through all four steps, okay? Produce the 36 ATPs. Now without, without oxygen, uh, breaks down pyruvate to create um, ethanol. We don't make ethanol. It's not like we're going to break it down and make some alcohol. Other animals do. Okay. Uh, so other animals can make ethanol or lactic acid. Okay. Lactic acid in our body, which is crazy. Here it is. It's as simple as that. This glucose comes in. Um, the pyruvate. Uh, no oxygen to fermentation, we make this on the left. So no oxygen, fermentation. Oxygen present, keep going through acetyl-CoA, citric acid cycle, and make some um, energy through oxidative phosphorylation. Okay? So it's just a path that uh, our cells take. Crazy, right? Um, different types of um, forms of getting energy, proteins, carbs, fats, we talked a little bit about. Um, they can enter in different areas of the cycles themselves. They don't all necessarily start in the first one. Um, maybe our body decides to uh, break down the fats into glycerol and fatty acids. So once they're into fatty acids, then we get into acetyl-CoA and jump in directly. If they're in glycerol, then they come over here and start at the top. So um, proteins also will break it down to amino acids. Some can enter in the first step, second step, third step, or all the way at the end. Okay? So... So yeah, so uh, real quickly to finish up. Um, whew, last thing, so let me make a chart real quick, okay? Uh, let me add a table, and I feel like this is gonna help you a lot uh, when we do, um, when you go over this. So we're gonna do it six by one, two, three, four, five. Six by five. Okay, in our table we're gonna have the stage, we're gonna have, um, Start with, what do we start with? And with, uh, we're gonna have number, let's see if I can be reading, ATPs, method of ATP, and um, I will put E minus carriers, electron carriers. Okay, so the stage will start with, let me see if I can make this either another color or bold or something like that. Um, so we're almost done. I'm just gonna do this table, kind of summarize everything we've been doing. Okay. Um, can we have that over? Cool. Awesome. All right. Now, stage. First of all, glycolysis. See if you're paying attention. Strat with. Start with. There it is. Start with. End with. So glycol. Spelled the wrong again. Glycolysis. Okay. We start with glucose. Right. We end with two pyruvates. How many energy is made? So we have up here, glycolysis, glucose, um, two pyruvates. Two total energies are made, technically four, but we use two, so technically two. Um, NADH and SLP, okay? Number of ATPs, two. Method, SLP. Substrate level, remember phosphorylation, adding that P, and NADH, to NADH, to ATP. Nice. Next step, by pyru pyruvate oxidation. We start with two pyruvates. We end with two acetyl-CoAs. How many energies are made? Zero, method, no method, because we didn't make any energies. And electron carriers, we make two NADHs, okay? Awesome. Step three, 
citric citric acid cycle. Okay, so we started with whatever the last one ended to acetyl OA. We ended with we ended with um, nothing. What do you mean nothing? Let's go back to our step. Citric acid cycle. Uh, we produce some CO2 to the left, but as a molecule itself, the glucose are already broken down to acetyl CO2A and acetyl CO2A is broken down into everything already completely. So we really release some CO2, but um, molecule itself that we stay and we use later on, nothing. Um, just the carriers and the energy. Okay. So we have two ATPs through SLP. And we also created two, six NADHs and two FADHs. Six NADHs, two FADH2s. And last but not least, oxidative phosphorylation. Oh, I hate when I spell with a caps like that. I got to delete the whole thing. Oxidative phosphorylation. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we left, or we started with whatever was left over, so it was nothing, just the carriers. Remember in our picture here, um, where is it at? Right here. Uh, remember, we just have our carriers coming in and pumping it, coming in and pumping it. Um, that's all we started with. So technically, we just left with carriers. We start with the carriers, um, end with nothing as well. Um, number of ATPs. Ooh, here's a good one. 32 ATPs. Um, the method. Chemi. This one was already changes. Chemiosmosis. Y through ATP synthase. Okay. And the carriers, no carriers as well. We're done here. So we made it all those energy molecules. So in total, we got our 36 ATPs. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I'll see you all on Monday or Wednesday. Have a good week.